Hello, my name is Eugene Abedu, a Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert on Windows Server 2012 Server Infrastructure. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a bootable WinP media so that you can use it to capture your operating systems and deploy it on multiple hardware. First of all, before you can create your bootable WinP media, you need the Windows Assessment and Deployment Toolkit, the Windows ADK. So I'm going to show you how you can get the Windows ADK from the internet so that if you don't have the Windows ADK, you can just grab it from there so when you open your browser you need to visit this microsoft website the microsoft download center you can use the link over here to reach this particular website and when you get over here there is a search engine you just type windows adk and the one we are using for our course is Windows ADK 8.1. Windows ADK 8.1 can be used to capture Windows 8.1, Server 2012 R2, and then also you can use it to capture Windows 8, Server 2012, Windows 7, Server 2008, and 208 R2. And then you can also use it to capture and deploy Windows Vista. So you're going to select this link over here and then wait for the result. Okay, so the result of this search gives us this one over here. It shows Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. Okay, we're going to use this link over here. Uh, you click on it. When it opens, you see that it gives us a detailed information about this particular software and then the system requirement as you can see you can use it on all these Microsoft operating systems okay so one thing about this particular toolkit is that uh, when you are downloading it they don't give you the entire ISO they give you something like a small downloader that you can use it to get the software so when you click on this download link over here you will not get the full package but rather they will give you uh, a small downloader that you can use to get a software from the internet so we're going to click on save here to save this particular software okay I'm going to open my downloads folder by clicking on that particular link over there and then open the software when you open it you would see that it tries to connect to the internet so you have to make sure you have enough bundle to get this work done if you are going to use this approach that I'm using let's wait for it okay it gives us a security warning I trust the software so I'm going to click on run and a blue window pops up with a small white toolbox image in it okay the window pops up here and it tells us that we need 5.7 gig before we can or before we can install if you want to install it directly it requires this amount of space and then if you want to download this is the amount of space that is required before you can get it downloaded so you have to make sure you have enough bundle to get this thing downloaded okay so when i click over here it's going to start downloading a package okay but i already have it downloaded so i'm going to just cancel this okay then we get a package i have my package already here in my software's folder somewhere here okay this is it when you are done downloading it's in a folder form i just placed it in an iso it's not like this 
so this is how it looks after you are done downloading it this is how it looks okay so we are going to install the windows adk 8.1 on our virtual machine okay i'm using vmware workstation 11 so let's connect this particular iso that contains our windows adk to this virtual machine by double clicking on this cd icon over here i double click and then i'll make sure this radio button has been moved to use iso image file i'll click on browse and then i'll navigate to wherever that i kept this particular iso okay if yours is not in iso if you downloaded it from microsoft download center and it's not in iso you can use power iso to make it an iso and then you can connect it to your virtual machine so mine is already done i'll double click on 8.1 and click on ok here once it gets loaded into my vmware it's now connected to my vmware i'll go to computer and click on open double click to have access to this setup okay right click or double click to open the package okay so once it's opened we see a couple of options that we can use okay so it tells us that uh, the computer is up to date. Do I want to continue? I click on continue over here and it's going to give me some list. Okay. It gives us a list of tools that is within the Windows ADK 8.1. And namesake, we are not going to be needing these packages as I already said. Okay, for now. So we install these three plus the Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition. Okay because i've already installed mine that is why the sql server express edition is not showing but if the, this is the first time you are installing yours it should show somewhere below this particular uh checkbox down here okay so mine is already installed it's just the next next finish approach no technical skills is required anyone can install it and mine has already been installed so i'll just click on cancel here and select yes and close close after the installation is done you would see the deployment tools over here on your start screen okay so what you need to do if you want to create the WinP media is to right click on the deployment tools command prompt and run it as an administrator this is very important because the deployment tools is going to write certain files to the system root which is your c drive and this is a protected area in the operating system so, so i recommend you run the deployment tools command prompt in administrative mode this command prompt is different from the usual windows command prompt when i type cmd over here you will see that we have two different command prompts the icons look the same but each works differently okay if you want to know whether you are the right place when you launch the deployment command prompt as an admin what you need to do is just run the command image x when you run image x and you get a reply then it means you are the right place so this user account control is telling us do you want to do this it's a security feature in windows 8 operating systems and it's been there ever since the era of windows vista so i'll just click yes here to agree and i'll test whether i'm at the right place i'll just type image x and it gives me some help okay when you type image x and then you don't get a reply like this it means you are maybe in the windows command prompt the normal windows command prompt so you have to go check and make sure you are at the right place and my command prompt has been customized that is why you see the text to be green and the background to be black Okay, by default it's supposed to be white this is the option that i use when you right click on this title bar over here and you go to properties you get a chance to change the font type the font size and then the layout and the colors of the text and the background so 
if you really want to do this you can do it okay let's jump right into uh, what we are supposed to do on creating the mutable WinP media the first command that we are going to run here is copy p if you are going to use this WinP media on 64-bit platform there is a different way you have you are going to type the command from if you are going to use it on a 32-bit platform all the machines we are using now VMware is running 62-bit versions of the Windows operating system so I am going to use the 64-bit approach but I also show you how to do it if you are going to deploy it on 32-bit uh, environment so I'm going to run my command copy p copy p space amd 64 space c colon backslash space c colon backslash wp this wp is optional is the name we are giving it to we are giving to our um folder that we want to keep our files in you can use any name you want but i always like keeping things simple so i'm using this approach and i think i've made a mistake with amd amd 64 okay this is for 64 bit version if you are making a 64 bit version of the WinP media this is how you do it this is a command you need to use if you are using if you're going to create a 32-bit version of the WinPE media, you need to change this command over here to x86. Okay, then you can create a 32-bit version of the WinPE media. Okay, so I'll just run AMD64. Sometimes I feel like I'm using Office Suite. It does auto-correction for me, so I just type the text anyhow. Okay. So I'm going to type, just going to press enter over here so that this command will be executed. I'll press enter here and it's creating the directory and after that it's going to copy the files to it. That directory shouldn't exist. That means that you shouldn't open your computer and go and create the folder before you come and run this command. The command will create the folder that is doesn't exist and then put the files in it automatically for you you don't need to go and create a folder on drive c before you come and run the command else it's going to give you error okay so the copy process has finished successfully okay today i'm going to show you a very simple way of doing this thing than the one that we did in the classroom the previous time so i'll just go ahead and double click my computer we're going to check whether the copy was successful in the GUI so I'll open drive C and as you can see we have WP folder over here and when we open it and get into media we have all our WinP um, files over here but there's one thing that we need to do so that we can use this WinP media very well with uh, multiple commands such as imagex okay you can just convert this particular image, uh, these files over here into an ISO file and then it will still be bootable but the problem is that you might not be able to use uh, your image X uh, command. So what we are going to do here is to mount this particular WinP media, the, 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 the image and then modify it by adding our image x command line utility to it and then we're going to unmount it and then save the changes okay the previous time that uh, we practiced this thing i took you through uh, program files 32-bit version program files uh, windows kit folder 8.1 assessment and development kit and then we opened windows pre-installation environment amd64 and then we opened this enus and we copied this wimp.wim 64-bit uh, image 
to our folder that we created, modified it, and then replaced it with the one that we have in our copied files. Okay, this is quite a long process. There's also an alternative. What you can do is here is that you can just copy this guy over here to your C drive in a folder that we just created and then mount it, modify it, and then use it. Okay, but there's also a shortcut right within this folder over here when you open media and then you open sources you can also copy this particular boot.wim to your root directory over here in the WP, the WP folder and then mount it or you can mount it right from this particular path modify it and save it that one you don't need to do any renaming and copying to overwrite okay so we're going to try this today we are going to mount this boot.wim folder right from this particular fo uh, this boot.wim image right from this particular folder so let's take note of the path okay it's important when we open drive c and we open the wp folder we open media we scroll down to sources when we open sources we have boot.wim we're going to mount this particular boot.wim image modify it and then save it okay so you're going to take note of the path i'll just click on this uh unc path over here and add backslash and then I'll use the arrow down so that I can get the full path to this place okay I'll just I just used you click okay let me do it again you click here you type backslash and then you press down so that you can get the direct link to where this boot.wim is okay i'll just copy this link over here and then i'll come back to my deployment command prompt okay and then i'm going to mount that particular image this guy over here i'm going to mount it in the mount folder over here okay so I'll just type DISM. I already told you that we use DISM to mount WIM files and we can also use it to unmount and we can also use it to install a couple of uh, features in Windows like .NET and we can also use it to install network services like DNS Active Directory, DSCP and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to use DISM to mount our boot.wim that is located in our folder over here when I come to media and I go to sources this is the guy we are mounting this is the image we are mounting so I'll type dism space forward slash mount wim mount dash wim space forward slash wim file colon c colon backslash i'm telling the dism command line to where the wim file is located okay c colon backslash wp backslash okay this is where i will need what i just copied over here okay you see this part over here the one that we copied before you just press backslash down arrow to get the name and you can use your mouse to just drag over it copy and then you come and paste it here so that we get a full part to where the wind file is and then we need to indicate the index of that particular image we are mounting i already told you that you can have multiple images within one wim file 
okay that is why you see multiple versions of windows when you are installing certain operating systems you see uh windows 8 pro windows 8 enterprise and all those kind of stuff is because multiple operating systems have been appended to one WIM file okay so we just still need to specify even though we have just one uh live cd within this particular WIM file we still need to specify by typing forward slash index colon one telling it the first image or the first uh OS in this particular image is what we are about to mount. Okay, so we type mount dir. We have to tell the deployment command prompt where we want to mount this image to. So we type mount dir, mount dir. Then we type the path to where we want to mount it. We bring C colon colon C colon backslash then WP space no WP backslash mount. This is what this means. We are mounting a WIM file with the DISM command. And this is where the WIM file is located. We are mounting the first index WIM file of this particular image. And then the mount directory, the folder in which we want to mount this particular image is mount, which is located on the WPE folder that also resides on drive C. Okay, so I'll just step back here. And then I'll run this command by pressing on enter. The mountain has just started. Okay. It takes a bit of time, but it should be done in a few seconds. Okay. So the mounting is done. How do we know the mount was successful? It gives us a message over here. And then when we open this folder over here too, and we open our mount folder, it gives us some information. So whatever that we have within this particular folder over here is the boot.wim file that resides in our sources folder, which is also in media that resides on our WP folder on drive C. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. We need to add image X. That is the reason why we mounted this image so that we can use the image X command line utility to do our capturing uh, when it's needed. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is to place this folder here on one side. Okay. Please take note of the path. I opened my drive C. Let me go back. Drive C. WP mount windows I'll scroll down to system 32 this is where we want to add our image X command line utility so I just place this uh, folder that has been opened at one side of my screen and I'll go and open up the location where I'm going to copy my uh, image X I'll open computer open drive C and open program files x86 open windows kit open 8.1 open assessment and deployment kit this is where we need to go okay so we open deployment tools the files are plenty sometimes i get confused myself and we open on uh, amd64 we open the DISM folder and then we scroll down and this is the tool we are looking for the image X command line utility I'll just copy it from here and then paste it within my system 32 folder in the mount directory 
if we have forgotten where we are supposed to paste it i'll step back by going to computer c drive wp mount instead <laughs> mount windows system 32 okay then i'll paste my image x file here it asks me this is a restricted area do i still want to proceed i say here continue okay i already told you that when i say i say something like say yes it means click yes right okay so let's do it so once we've added our image x command line utility to our WinP media it's about time we unmount it and then save the changes that we've made so i recommend you close all these windows before you unmount because the last time some people were getting errors because the folders that they are unmounting were still opened in their windows operating system and that can give you error so make sure all windows have been closed before you unmount and then save your changes so we're going to use this command to unmount it the same dism dism space forward slash unmount dash whim space forward slash mount dir colon c colon wpe c colon backslash wpe hmm. let me just colon backslash wpe backslash mount space four slash commit the commit parameter we are adding to it is going to make sure the image x that we added has been saved to our image okay so i'll press enter over here and the image the changes that have been made to the image has been saved successfully so it's now mounting okay we have success here all right now the last thing that we need to do is to convert everything that we have in this our wp folder especially in this media folder to an iso file a bootable iso file so that we can use it to do our capturing and applying of uh, reference images so we are going to run this command make winp media okay make winp media make winp media space for slash iso space c colon backslash wp space then we tell it the name that we want to give to our image the iso image and the directory we want to keep the image in so i'll say here c colon backslash win p underscore amd 64 i have already told you that this name that we are giving to our WinP media is optional. You can name it with your name, Eugene WinP, Kweku WinP. ISO, Ama WinP. ISO. This part of the command, this part of the command is optional. You can put any name here, but you have to make sure you give it the extension. ISO. Okay, so. I'll press enter here and the iso image creation 
has just begun. All right. So the creation of our ISO image, WinP Media ISO image is completed. We don't need this deployment command prompt now anymore. You can type exit to close it and go and check on your media. It looks good. This is our WinP bootable live CD. Okay. So I'll just copy it here. I want to test whether it works properly. So I'll copy and send it to my desktop. I'll just right click here on this file copy and send it to my host machine's desktop, not the Windows 8 running on our virtual machine. So I'll just reduce the screen over here, minimize, and then just a moment. I'll paste it on my desktop. Right now I pasted and it's not coming. This is a bug in VMware. I have to recopy it again. Right click, copy, and then paste. And it's now coming. So when you copy for the first time and it's not working, don't give up. You just copy again and paste. All right. Now, I'm going to test this ISOMI image if it works by connecting it to this virtual machine and restarting my system. So I'm going to double click on this CD icon over here. Make sure I've switched this radio button to use ISO image and these two check boxes are on all the time. If I, okay, so I have to browse, go to my desktop, select this WinP underscore AMD64 file and then make sure these two checkboxes are on and now click OK here if you are not using VMware but you're using a physical machine you can burn this ISO that you just created to a CD and then you connect it to your uh, CD-ROM or DVD-ROM and then you boot to it so I've connected my ISO file as you can see the notification here shows that WinP underscore AMD 64 dot ISO has been connected to this virtual machine. And then when I go full screen and double click on computer and double click on my ISO file, you see that everything looks good over here. So what I'm going to do is to restart this my virtual machine and then boot to this particular image. So you can use this option you press window key plus R and then you type this command shut down space you can use space 4 slash s space 4 slash t space 0 or you can use dash s space dash t space 0 it tells the machine to shut down within 0 seconds okay so it goes fast and you can also use the GUI of course to shut it down a normal process I love this command let's run it Okay, so when the machine restarts, you have to be quick and then press the hot key that will bring your boot menu. On VMware, you press escape to get your boot menu, but you have to click and make sure your mouse cursor is in the virtual machine before you press escape. And when you press escape, you have to press it once. When you press the escape, you have to press it once. As for the cursor, you can keep clicking so many times but the escape when you press and you press again it's going to just get vanished uh, okay so that command shuts down the, mach the machine if you use shutdown space dash r then it's going to restart okay or shutdown space 4 slash r space 4 slash t space 0 then it's going to restart so i'm going to power up this machine and then keep clicking make sure my cursor gets in then i'll press escape okay you press escape once when you miss it you can restart the virtual machine and then try again okay so i'm going to click on the down arrow here to cd rom drive select it and press any key to boot from it it's just like installing a normal operating system okay when the CD starts booting and you don't press 
any key to boot from DVD, it will just skip and boot the normal operating system. So let's take note of that. If you are using the physical machine, you can press F12 if it's a, if it's a Dell machine. And then if it's an HP machine, you can press escape. It will bring up the boot menu. Okay, so the WinP Media is done launching itself. So I'm going to type image X here to test. Okay, my Keza is outside. If your Keza gets stuck in the VMware, you can press Control Alt, then it will come out of the VMware, then you can get to your host machine. Okay, so I'm in now. I'll type image X here. Press Enter, and it gives me a help. That shows that the addition of this command line utility was successful. So my WinP media is a good one. Okay, so I'm going to shut down my WinP media by typing WPE util space shutdown. Okay, and you can also use WPE util space reboot if you want to reboot so i run the command by pressing on the enter key and then my system is off so that is that for the creation of a bootable wimp media thank you very much for watching all right see you next time bye bye